Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jess and Scott Show tonight on Earth Day. And I have to tell you, every single day is Earth Day in our house. And I think that to some degree that applies to Scott, and it definitely applies to Wayne. And we are going to have just a fun, fabulous show for you tonight. In preparation for today, and the whole idea of gratitude, and one of the things that I see as a big part of Earth Day is gratitude for having a place to live as beautiful as we live, to have a place that we can populate and grow and morph a little bit to our whim, yet understand the beauty and the power of the natural symmetry of things. When you talk about things like rewilding or um, conservation of forests or preservation of animals and plants. It makes me think of these little guys right here. I'm going to hold it up to the screen. And this is the cutest little thing I have ever seen in my life. I came across it at a boutique one time. This is called a seed of happiness. And it literally is called a seed of happiness and it has a little card that says this is a seed of happiness and this is where you buy them. It is an artist who had leftover clay, not enough to make a project, but enough to do something with. And they, they were like, what can we do with all of this? So they turned them into these little balls. They gave them little smiley faces. They painted them, and they threw them in the kiln, and they sell them by the bag. So if you want to go to seedofhappiness.com and get your own, do that. I actually carry these around, and I give them to people. <laughs> because... No matter what we're doing, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, how cool is it that we can make a teeny tiny impact? And in the spirit of Earth Day and the fact that we can make an impact, take a, take a gander at this card. And I can't read it, so Scott, you're going to have to read it for me. In, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. Happy Earth Day, everybody. All right, let's go to the open. Here we go. Okay, Jess, take it away. It's all yours. All right. So I get to stand tonight, right? I am not in my normal location. This is going to be really interesting for me to hold still for a camera because when I speak and when I speak in front of people, I move. I move through the crowd. I move across the screen. I move across the stage, whatever I've got. So hang with me because I'm probably going to be a little bit more animated than usual. I wanted to start the show by uh, highlighting a few comments. Tracy Baker says, this topic is near and dear to my heart. One of my true passions. I'm so glad you're doing this show. And Jason Frasca stopped by and said, one of my favorite guest appearances was on the Jess and Scott and You show. You're going to have a blast, Wayne. And Delilah says, I'm up and waiting. We'll see you all in a little while. Then Cheryl stopped by. And Tracy is in the house. And let's see. Cher oh, I already mentioned you, Cheryl. Bill's here. Kristen is here. She said she was running a little late because she just came from someplace else. Didn't miss anything, my dear. Nothing at all. All right. So, Scott, how has your Earth Day been today? Oh, it's been a terrific time. I'm, I am uh, visiting uh, family on the uh, shores of a lake and have been thinking about Earth Day because uh, we've been preparing for the show. And so uh, uh, that's my answer to you. That's awesome. I watched some deer in my front yard today. I spent most of the day inside, but I did get outside to at least walk around my yard some because I really, when I take breaks, I really need to get out of the house, and today was a beautiful, beautiful Seattle day. I'm trying to think about the best way to introduce Wayne here. And, you know, not only is he just really one cool dude, he is incredibly crafty. So here we are, we're planning the show, we invite him to come on, and our whole show actually changed up a little bit because of how creative and exciting all of the all of the creative juices started to flow for Scott and for Wayne and for myself. Wayne is a visionary. He's the creator of a World for Change TV and he's on a mission to make a difference and change the world around him. 
before that, he was working as a small business sales consultant, has been to nursing school, worked as an EMT, a volunteer firefighter, supervised heavy equi equipment crews at job sites. That's something I've always wanted to do, by the way. He's also been a sheep farmer. Not something I wanted to do. Restored his first car by the time he was 16. He's dedicated a single father on a mission to build a better world by helping each one of us learn how to become more sustainable and self-reliant in our daily lives. And that about says it all for Wayne. Wayne, we are so glad to have you. Good evening. Good evening to you, and I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> this is a, a new thing for me to actually shoot an HOA outside. I mean, how incredible is that? I mean, it's perfect for Earth Day, right? And, and how can we tell that you're outside, Wayne? Oh, you can hear the frogs in the background, can you not? Absolutely. Uh, it's, <laughs> I, you know, I thought when I was getting ready for this, I mean, I've got the tropics out in the backyard right now, and I, I thought, you know, it would be great if they'd just be quiet. But, it's, you know, it's perfect, and I, and I hope it, it, it's, it adds to the show. Well, you know, uh, what, what we grow up is so important, and it's been years. I mean, it's been decades since I've actually heard frogs, and then you came on, and I realized there are three things that I miss, and this is an appropriate Earth Day comment from, li from living in Montana. I, I miss the stars. I miss the inclement weather that's really wonderful, and now I realize that I miss the frogs because I, I, you grow up with it, and that's the sounds of the night, isn't it? Yeah. It is, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's it's relaxing. I grew up in Indiana, and it was the same way there. And then I lived in the city for a while in Indianapolis, and uh, that's one of the things that um, the the wildlife and missing the sounds of the night, if you will, uh, is what I really missed, and and one of the driving factors in um, making me to uh, cause me to wake up and realize what's going on around me and what I'm really looking to do with my life and that's definitely not living in an apartment the rest of my life or in the city or the suburbs. <laughs> do you have land? Are you? Do you just have a typical yard or do you actually have acreage? Um, right now I'm living with a friend I'm looking for acreage to purchase and we have a typical yard but it's a decent sized yard right now in a, the suburb area of Charlotte. So. That's awesome. That's really cool. We have five acres. We moved. Uh, we moved a year ago, and we had two and a half acres, and we moved, to, and we now have five acres. And I really want more, but I am very happy for what I can have as close to the city as I am. We have really a good balance of, of everything, yeah. and our nature is still around us, which is which is really cool. And I also miss the stars. Holy moly! Do you get to see the stars on a regular basis? Not not where I'm at. I mean, I'm I'm close enough to the city where it's just the normal um, washed out sky look of the city. But um, about a year ago, I was living out in the country further, and we definitely could see the stars. And I'm gonna get back out there. That's so awesome. I tell you what, yeah. And inclement weather is not what I get excited about, Scott. Um, the idea of just watching the weather go by. We were talking about tornadoes earlier today in a conversation I was having. And Carter had asked me once, he goes, you know, we were talking about the Wizard of Oz. He just watched the Wizard of Oz for the first time, and he was so excited that I had seen a tornado. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that's something to be really excited about or not, but it sure is an awesome force of nature. Well... Uh, incidentally, we're supposed to, uh, absolutely, uh, <laughs> we forgot to mention that Wayne uh, loves peanut butter. Thank you, Delilah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Delilah. We needed to know that. <laughs> what do you like to eat with your peanut butter? Just off the spoon? Oh, you know, I can eat it just about any way, but I would say one of my favorite ways to eat it is with bananas and ice cream. Ooh, that's really cool. Now, see, we used to eat it spoonfuls of peanut butter dipped into a bag of M&Ms before they made peanut butter M&Ms. <laughs> well, we, we would take peanut butter and put it on a plastic spoon and then hang it from the tree and then the squirrels that were in the neighborhood would come by and, and feast yeah. and entertain our indoor cats who were looking out the window at that. So. <laughs> so, Scott, tell us, you did a little bit of research. What is the history of Earth Day? Well, let's start there. Okay, well, the, yeah, I'm the historian on in the film strip. I, I, you know, there, there are. Uh, did you know there are actually people alive who don't remember a world without Earth Day? Me. Um, yeah. I'm one of those people. Earth Day is so, for me. 
So Earth Day came about in my formative years. Uh, there were there was the Vietnam War, and it was very tumultuous. And we thought that we could make a better world. And there was a moment in 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 life that there seemed to be there seemed to be hope for the future. And those who were involved in the movement pivoted from thinking about you know getting away from war. They were called flower children. There's a reason why they were called flower children. And they went to the areas that they were really trying to promote. And so for me, the very first two or three Earth Days were kind of political in nature because the the uh, the Earth, well, it still is polarized. The, the country was polarized at that time. And Walter Cronkite came on, and I remember it was the lead story on the nightly news about Earth Day. And out in the middle of Montana, it was, we're five years behind the times anyway, all these people in San Francisco, they, there was a march down you know, one of the, one the streets, and people were really making a big deal of it. And quite frankly, I thought it was a one-day or a one-year wonder. And I was surprised when it came back the next year, and it came back the year after that. And you know, people have just never, never looked back. So one of the question I'm, I'm wondering is, has the, you know, do people of different generations view Earth Day differently, or do we all think about it the same way? Um, your thoughts? Okay, well you told us your view, Wayne. What generation are you a part of? Well, I, I'm I'm 32, so. Okay, so you're a X wide like I am. But I'm I'm not a very good specimen for for Earth Day. You know, I grew up very um, conservative in Central Indiana. Went to a private school, and we talked about Earth Day, but you know, we were we were in a community of farmers anyway, and that's what we did for a living. Um, so, you know, Earth Day just wasn't that, you know, it didn't make that much of an impact on me. I do remember doing a field trip or something when I was in middle school age and going and planting some trees. But other than that, you know, it doesn't mean as much to me as what it may mean to some other people. Uh, other than the fact that it's kind of like Christmas and Easter and, and Thanksgiving, it's a reminder that we need to be conscious of what's going on around us. And that's what it is more for me. Um, and like you said at the beginning of the show, Earth Day is every day at our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, is, is, is Earth Day a, a liberal holiday, or is it, uh, is it a conservative one? Is it, a, is it one that uh, people in the cities try and uh, get back to nature with, or is it uh, something that rural folks celebrate because, you know, that, that's what they do? And is it an American phenomena only, or do they celebrate it, uh, you know, in England or in Canada? That's a good Inquiring point. minds want to know. So anybody in our audience, that's your cue. It is. And <laughs> Jess is a whiz on Comet Tracker. I'm, I'm trying to keep up, but I'm not sure how good I'm at that. Well, we're, so, we're, we're, we're celebrating Earth Day in kind of some special ways, aren't we, Jess? On we the show? But before we jump into that, I want to jump in. Look at this. Phil wants acreage for his permaculture ambitions. Yeah, I, I was looking at that, Phil, and you and I need to talk. I know you've been following me for a while, but we do need to talk, buddy. Okay, it sounds like a show in the making. Tracy Baker, come to Taos. We have 18 acres. <laughs> and Cheryl says, I want 100 acres, and the only neighbors that are the four-legged guys. <laughs> nice. Us too, by the way. We, I would love to have way more acreage than I do, but I do live in the city. And I love the fact I live in the city. And I don't know about where you guys live, but the, um, the city that we live in is, I would say Seattle is an incredibly progressive town. And when we moved here, I was excited because of all what I would consider progressive when it comes to food or um, recycling or just conservation in general and it was old hat to Ryan where he grew up in Kansas compared to where I grew up in Kansas was very different. Oh what do you have there Wayne? Yeah blue box me. If you talk you'll okay. be blue, blue box too. Oh yeah okay Tracy Baker says uh, have we be, been desensitized to the concept of Earth Day you know thinking that we uh, only have to think about the Earth one day a year. I really hope not. I really, I really hope not. That's not cool. If that's the case, Tracy. 
Wow, well, and uh, Denise Du says is from Canada and knows uh, nothing about Earth Day. Oi. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Oi. Oi. And then Carrie says perhaps the intention of the day has changed over the years. That's actually an interesting thing too. Um, so Scott, once you take off your um, your comment, I think that oh. we'll be Thank ready you. to you're welcome show off some of this fun that we are going to be having. So part of our show tonight was yes, I'm in my kitchen because I am going to demonstrate how to make some seed, ball, seed bombs so that we can use them. You could probably call them seed bombs or balls or something else. We don't want to like get in trouble with anybody who's in security. We need a name for that. <laughs> what are you and and Wayne is also going to be doing a project. What's your project, you, Wayne? We're going to address some of the the biggest challenges that new gardeners have, which is keeping a constant. Um, a, a water supply to their plants. So we're going to make some mini self-wicking water beds. Love it. Okay, so while, while Wayne is getting set up, I am go Scott is going to unhide my second camera. This is a first. Not only am I in my kitchen, I actually have two cameras, not just Scott this time. So I am feeling pretty darn, I'm pretty, feeling pretty darn spiffy here. Go girl. Go girl. <laughs> now, I can tell you, um, what you need to make a seed bomb would be some dirt. And my camera's probably going to be a little slow. Some seeds. And I use wildflower seeds for this. And specifically, I am using seeds from the Northwest so that they grow well. And we also need just some clay. Now, the clay that I'm using tonight is not the clay I would normally use. It is the it is clay that I would, I'm trying to get it into that picture. It is, this is already a somewhat wet clay. If you can find a dry clay, that would be better. And you just, my dirt is actually a combination of potting soil and compost. And then um, I, I told you about my seeds and my clay. And then we also need some water. Oh, and then that is, and then from there, we get to mix all those together until we have this nice goopy consistency. And part of that nice goopy consistency would be this wonderful bowl of everything mixed together. So I went ahead and I mixed it all together so you didn't have to watch me because it does take a little time. And you want it to be wet enough that you can form things but dry enough that it's not soupy. And it looks like I have to add a little bit more water to this. And then you just get your hands in there and you just mix it all together. By the way, for this demonstration, I am channeling my inner Heather Crafter. So, lovely, if you are watching, this is all inspired by you, by the way, and all of the sparkle that you show out there in the world. So when you get this as wet as you want it, all you have to do then is form it into what you want. And this is the easiest thing to do. One of the reasons I like doing this one, this particular project, is... Carter can do it with me, okay? So he did it last year when he was two. He did it this year with me when he was three. And this is something that we will probably do over time because what we do is we carry them on walks and we just drop them along the street where there aren't any flowers in hopes that maybe someday some of these flowers will grow. So you go. did you want to say something, Scott? Well, I was going to put you on the spot and ask you, you've done this for a few years, and I was going to compliment you on that because what, what you're really doing is that in addition to uh, creating memories, childhood memories, you're, you're starting family traditions. And this, this may be something that would be going on. You know, we're talking about generations. It might go on for generations. Have you noticed uh, when you've done this in the past, have you gone back to uh, some of the areas where you have uh, sown your seeds and, and seen the, if not the fruits of your labor, the flowers of your labor? We don't really know because I can't tell you that. Last year we were in a different house. So um, what we did last year, we don't get to watch and see the results this year. So that's a question I will know more next year as we're doing this. But for anybody who lives in a city and walks by one of those totally uncared for beds that's basically wilted or empty, these are perfect. You can just kind of pull them out of your pocket and drop them right in. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing we use these for in our house is we use them for gifts. We use them for... Um, for Mother's Day gifts, 
for May Day gifts because May Day is coming up and May Day is another opportunity for us to with the flowers and the running away and all that other good stuff in the May Day poll you get all of this opportunity to um, share something and having these little seeds, these balls of seeds would be good. Now I'm going to show you what I'm making here. I'm going to see if I can get it under the camera enough. It's about the, it's about the diameter of a quarter, a tiny little ball. I've got to practice this. I don't know where I'm at here under this camera. Yeah. Uh, little, little, um, uh, uh, how, how do I describe it? A uh, little to your right. Yeah, okay. right there. You're, you're in center screen right there. Yeah. Terrific. So it's these little, these little things, and I just set them on a drying rack. Uh, they multi-purpose my, my cookie cooling rack for a drying rack for my wonderful little. So, so what are the seeds that you're using, Jess? I am using Northwest Wildflower Mix. Now, there are two ways that I have seen when I was doing research for this. There were two ways that I have seen people use seeds. They grab like what I've got and they just dump them in here and there's a quantity of seeds. There's also a way suggested that you soak them overnight so that anything that floats to the top comes out so you know that the seeds that are going into these wonderful little creations are going to um, be more likely to bloom. Now the other thing is um, you can, if you don't want to make your own, which can be a little tricky, you can actually buy already made mud mix, if that's uh, an okay name to call it, and all you have to do is add your seeds and then let them dry. So they're, depending on how earthy you actually want to be, how crafty you actually are, how dirty you actually want to get, you can still participate in this fun environment to, or in this fun project to make a wonderful um, project for fun, for Mother's Day, for May Day, and be able to really spend some time thinking about what you're doing when this gets to come to you, or gets to come to fruition. So, um... You know what? What you had done had reminded me of a uh, a, a book that uh, uh, we read uh, to our child when he was growing up, and it, I'll put it in the comment uh, stream after the show. Miss Rumpius, and she would take the seeds, not unlike what you're doing, and it was lupins, and sow them all across the uh, all across the land, and that was a third of three things that she'd promised her grandfather to do, and uh, the specific thing was that she was going to make the world a more beautiful place. So if the if we had to redo the title of our show, I could see us titling it Make the World a More Beautiful Place. I think that would be accurate, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I had you uh, blue boxed uh, in terms of your... Um, uh, counter when you showed these the seeds that you use could you um... oh, sure, hang on just a second let me grab them let me finish okay. this one that I'm making so, um, and then it's the north for us because we're in the northwest it's the northwest seed mix yeah. I just went to my local Lowe's and they're gonna <laughs> that's what they had right we're, we're I wanted to do this now if you were really cool and you really were into Earth Day you actually might have seeds that you have harvested from the flowers on your property to include in these to actually use and I think that would be really fun I am not that earthy I'm crafty and I like my earth very much and I like to be aware but I'm not that earthy yeah so okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give my uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, this is pretty sweet, Jessica Duell. Love the concept of gorilla planting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man, this. I don't know if I'll ever get used to this common tracker because you have to re you have to glance and read what it is ahead of time and all of that. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Let's try and find one more. Um, let's see here. Okay, so Tracy asked, do you factor in low water or no water flowers if you are flower bombing an empty bed? I think that that would be a really smart idea, um, and I might do that at some point when I locate the beds that really need attention here. That We might have two kinds, but in, ten in the attention, what we started this for with the project for a, a, 
children can do, that Carter could do, and we would have a fun time doing it together. That is why, um, so no, at this point we are not, but that makes a lot of sense to to consider that. What type of plant would you, what kind of seed would you use based off of the estimated water that's in the area? How much, how likely is it that it will be watered without the help of people? So, um, Elise says, uh, we celebrate Earth Day in Canada, exclamation marks, but to me, Earth Day is every day, too. Hey, how about if we pop over to see what Wayne's up to? Sounds sounds like a capital idea. Wayne, are you, um, okay, you're unmuted, and I'm going to blue box you, and what's that you've got going there? Okay, well, I just decided, you know, since the time is, it's looking like 1040 or so, I wanted to go ahead and get started. So I went ahead, and um, what I wanted to do was show you how you can take one of these little um, lettuce containers that you might find at the supermarket and turn it into a self-watering or wicking bed that you could grow maybe a couple of heads of lettuce or some salad greens or uh, maybe you want to grow some herbs, um, radishes, that kind of thing. That would be a great... Um, uh, you know, some great produce to put in this. And what I did was take the top lid that was snapped on here like this and just trimmed it out so that it would fit down inside the container. <clears throat> now what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a water uh, reservoir in the bottom of this container and then you're filling the top of it with dirt and that water gets to wick up through uh, this center hole here. So after trimming off the edge around here and making it fit down in, uh, I went and got these little jello cups or I don't know what you, what you use these things for, fruit cups. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I picked those up and I just traced around it here in the middle and cut out a hole using a utility knife this utility knife here and made it so that this cup would set down below the, um, the, the the bed or the base of the bed which separates it from the water and now all we have to do is drop this thing in but to get the water to wick up into the dirt we need to cut some slits or um, you know, one thing that would work really good, and I don't have it, but uh, would be a, a hole punch. You could use a hole punch and go around this and and cut some holes in this little tub so that the water can get up uh, into the dirt above it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut holes in it with a, just using a, a knife, I'm just going to cut slits in it all the way around. And this is going to allow the water to get in from that the, the water reservoir below and I'm going to take four more of these cups and put them in the corner of the water reservoir and set this in so now you have a water reservoir that's held up uh, or that's the space is held open by those four cups and you have one in the middle that's sticking down in this water reservoir um, and we'll whip the water up into the garden bed here above it. Now, the, the one thing that you're going to need is you're going to need something to be able to fill this water reservoir with. And I had this piece of PVC laying around. Um, and I just, <laughs> while we were in the green room, you know, I went out and grabbed the coffee. I forgot to grab this. So I also grabbed this uh, and cut a piece of PVC off. And all you have to do is stick it here into the corner and fill it in with dirt and then fill this uh, fill your water hole uh, or your water through this PVC. Now you could use a straw, you could use a big gulp straw or something like that and um, there you have it. It's a self-watering wicking bed and I'm not going to fill it up with dirt uh, just now because I don't have it with me. But um, That's a very simple solution to maybe a, an herb garden that you want to put in your windowsill. Now Go ahead, Scott. Oh, I was just going to ask you. You fill it. You fill it full of water once. Do you just? Uh, can you just forget about it and go away, or is it that it's that you can? Uh, how how can you? T well, uh, maybe I can guess about it. But what's what's the protocol once you've actually started going? Maybe that's the skillful 
way of asking the question. Yeah, the protocol would be once the water reaches the bottom of this little cup here in the middle that you would need to add more water, and you can see that through the edge of this container. I sound like a city guy when I asked that question, didn't I? <laughs> That's okay. You know, it's pro I'm sure somebody else was thinking the same thing. So, um, so th this is all you have to do, and now you have a nice little, and I'm, I'm holding it together because you kind of have to put dirt in it to make it work. But you put dirt in here and pack it down into this cup in the middle and um, fill it up and then plant your seeds. And it will wick uh, enough water up that it needs for the plant and it will not oversaturate uh, the water uh, or the, the dirt. Now, I, I did want to grab a couple of other things here while I'm at it. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that you can use any type of cup. You don't have to use these cups, uh, and you don't have to use this rectangle shape lettuce container. I grabbed um, another one from the store, and this one was the kind that's shaped like this. It comes as a, as a whole head of lettuce, and I decided to use the top for the base to hold the water, and this, um, the original base, I put a, a rubber band around it to keep it from falling in too deep and a cup in the middle. So now you have another style of a waking bed that's just a variation of the first one that I showed you. So the, the reason why I'm showing you a couple of variations is I don't want you to think um, in the box. I want you to think outside the box and think about the shapes of these things and how they fit together and uh, you can you, you know you can build something that's pretty neat and useful for for no money. Okay, wow, that that's really exciting. And I think of you know you said herbs, and that's that's one of those uh, on the to do list that, that you never really get around to. I haven't gotten around to because uh, I'm not much of a gardener, and we can go outside and and try it. But to be able to do something in your windowsill, if 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 you if you have you know an opportunity to have something a bay window in your kitchen or something like that, uh, fortunate, uh, you can actually have fresh herbs for your cooking. Then couldn't you? Right, and you know I'd like to uh, give a couple of real quick shout outs. Um, first of all, one of my YouTube subscribers um, makes a decent sized tub made from maybe a 15 or a 20 gallon uh, Rubbermaid tub. Um, uh, the, the Ben Gardening um, is the, the person that follows me and they make larger versions of this which gave me an idea and, and also uh, Stan Bush, I don't know if you all follow him, but he came up with the idea of using these lettuce containers and uh, he and I have been talking about it a little bit so we thought it would be fun to, to share that on the show tonight. Um, so I'd like you to all think about Stan Bush, and, and I'll make a comment below uh, after the show's over and give you a link to both of uh, uh, the, their uh, uh, YouTube channels or Google Plus pages. I think that's Please. great. You know, you guys were talking about herbs. I have to tell you, I can't grow anything. I've tried to garden for so many, so many things. These, that's why I love these. So here you go. Here's Del Delilah. She says, I'm amazed by this crafty stuff. I was never good at growing plants. These little guys, Delilah, you don't even have to worry about. It. You just make them and go. The other thing is, Scott, for you, for herbs in a, a small pot or whatever, I mean, you really can't kill rosemary. You really can't kill peppermint. You really can't kill sage. It just kind of grows. And so if you use any of those things, right, I'm thinking mojitos for mint or maybe tea. I don't know. Um, Rosemary for these amazing savory dishes that that's a really easy thing to do that even I can do and I really can't grow anything. Yeah. You know, I, uh, well, this takes me back to my youth as well because I can remember that we had mint that was growing. We had a, a faucet that was leaking so the mint would grow under it and it would just, you couldn't get rid of it. It was, it was wonderful. So. Yeah, mint, mint is a, is a plant that's um, it's, it's a very invasive plant, I guess, if you will. It is. So it's a Incredibly great plant invasive. to try to grow if you're new at gardening. In a pot. Otherwise, you're going to dig up all your grass at the right. end. In a pot. Right. There you go. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, well, you know, one, one of the things that I'm thinking is that uh, I, I remember... Uh, in terms of my child, every year 
he would be celebrating Earth Day in school. So part part of maybe the longevity of it is that this is something that really lends itself to a classroom and maybe even a school getting behind it. So because it is, it, it just screams for um, educational opportunities, right and left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I and you know, so let's take a look at my final product here. I, okay. Yeah, I literally dry them on a drying rack, and after about two days, when they're completely dry, and we did this this weekend so that I would have some ready. They turn into these little things. Now, um, mine looked so good. Ryan thought they were drop cookies, so watch out if you keep them in your house. <laughs> <laughs> that might be exciting. Um, and I put them into little bags. So whether they're clear plastic bags, whether they're little canvas bags, the one I have here is sort of see-through. And I'll throw in a, if I'm giving these as gifts, right, I'll throw in a seed of happiness with a card and a couple of these little seed balls with, an example, uh, with a little like, description of what they are and a beautiful card attached to it, and that becomes gifts. And we can give those out all summer long for a variety of different things. So that's what I one of the other ways besides doing the gorilla planting. That's an incredible uh, thing to do, Jessica. You know, it just fits right into the motto that we have over at the Pay It Forward community that that I'm uh, kind of a part of and in, in helping to to get going. And you know, I just I really think that that talking about it like this. And, and bringing it to an awareness that, you know, you don't have to make these things to just plant um, in the wild or to plant in those empty containers, but you can give them as gifts, like you said, and you can make uh, somebody's day and change a perspective that they may have or um, uh, help them through a rough time in their life. And I think that, you know, sometimes we forget that, that we have an opportunity to do that with everybody that we come in contact with. So... I love off it. Off my soapbox. <laughs> I don't know what I have blue boxed here. What do I have blue boxed? Or what do okay. I have? Uh, ben, Ben Gardening. Uh, ben Gardening, thanks, Wayne. I love how you modified the larger version of self-watering containers to fit in the windowsill. Great idea from Karen. Uh, hi, Karen. Um, thank you. And you know, that uh, came from Stan Bush. So Stan came up with the idea of using these these um, small containers like this and today uh, or no it was yesterday I'm sorry yesterday I made one of these and this is a, the next step up in size and it'd be good for um, maybe you know apartment livers um, or people that live in an urban setting that don't have um, a large place to put containers to grow um, and this is a version that if you want to learn how to uh, to do I made a video on it and I will be releasing that video on my YouTube channel uh, sometime tomorrow hopefully or the next day so don't hold me to it okay so I'm trying to think was there I loved the did we um, so that's your version of the finished product in a different size right Wayne yeah. That, that's correct. So, so this, and, and I'm not going to go into the full build of it, but this, this was two um, small containers that I got at one of the big box stores, um, one that I don't like to go to, um, and modified it and made it so that it has a water container uh, on the bottom, and then you can set your dirt container on top. And this is large enough where um, you can grow a. a decent sized uh, lettuce head or uh, probably about four of them in here and uh, you could have decent food production for you and your family off of uh, maybe a few of these sitting on your porch. Um, go ahead. So when you say decent food production, what, do, what does that mean? Well, um, I say it's it's decent in, in, um, in regards to somebody that's not growing a large garden. So if you're a new um, gardener and you're trying to get your head around, wrap your head around how to garden in a tight space or in an urban setting, um, this is going to give you, let's say, four heads of lettuce. You cut it back and you get four more heads of lettuce. So if you plant one um, each week or one every three days or so, you're going to have uh, lettuce to rotate through um, uh, throughout a, a week or two or three week time frame and you can continue to snip off of it and they'll grow and regrow uh, and if you get three or four of these bins about this size you'd have a nice salad every night for one person. Sounds like a winner. 
Yeah. It does. It does. Okay, it makes me want to plant a little bit differently. Because I... <laughs> <laughs> There, actually, the answer is no. Every time I always come up with obstacles, so I know gardening is not for me. Um, and that's okay because I love the idea of weighing everything that you're doing and everybody that's in our audience that does their own gardening. And I support our local farmers here, and that's my contribution there. All right, so check this out. Cheryl says, Delilah, the trick is to grow. The trick to growing plants is to talk to them. Not that the talking helps, but they never talk back, and it helps you. Really, it's part trial and error, and part to know when the plant looks like when it's dry to wet to more sun to less sun. That's really yeah. I haven't figured that part out either. <laughs> oh, that's too I, funny. I, I told Maggie as well. I don't know if she's on, but I told her that this show was going to be for her because uh, she had. She'd get an opportunity to learn how to take care of the watering portion of her plants. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have a ton of plants inside. I can keep plants inside, but they're typically daylilies. And the, okay, and the trick for that is what I learned was they love the closet. So when you want them to bloom, water them and stick them in the closet for three weeks, and then you bring them back out again, and the light change will get them to bloom. So my house is filled with these. Lily, these peace lilies, I think is what they're called, because mm -hmm. I can keep those alive. They live in the closet, they live in the light, they live without water, they live with water. You can't really overwater them. I'm pretty right. pleased with that particular plant. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, well, I've, I've got a nice cactus. Cactus is good. And actually, you know what? Somebody was talking about here that they could throw out part of a cactus in the desert. Where was that? I saw something about that, but... That's probably, I'm guessing that's Tracy. Is that Tracy? Tracy lives out in the in Taos. Tracy lives out, yeah, out in the Taos area, which yeah. is really beautiful. That's a place that's on my list to go see at some point. Haven't been to Taos yet. Yeah, me too. Speaking of sustainability, um, they live in an Earthship home, and uh, right there in Taos is the, the Earthship neighborhood or community. I'd love to learn how to build some of those. That's something that's on my list. Yeah. If, if you don't. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that uh, Jenny, uh, uh, Tracy says, uh, got to get the worms and the ladybugs for when the plants grow up, and bees for pollination. Yes. <laughs> new, new hippie. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I know bees. I would love to have some bees. What does okay. yours say, Wayne? What's yours, oh, Wayne? Oh, uh, uh, Kirsten. Drysdale says, on this very special Earth Day, as we look for ways to honor the great Ilium, I want to raise a toast to the ingenuity of the great Earth Protectors. Thank you, Wayne, for putting your mind towards the future. And thank you, Jess and Scott. Excellent. Oh, I you. love it. This is very cool. Well, you know, and we have come right to the time of going to the plus two, so this is a good transition. Is, is there anything else we should talk about with our projects at the moment? Um, yeah, as far as my projects go, if you don't, um, if you want more information on how to how to build these things, just ping me after the show, um, or or ask questions in the the strip below. But um, I will be producing a couple of videos here over the next week or so that's going to be talking about um, self watering containers, and that'll help people that uh, have a challenge with that or maybe have to leave the house for a work day and they can't tend to their plants during the day. So come over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Heck yeah, go over and check him out. He's got some cool stuff over there. And if you missed it, we are going to going to put the link that he did for his uh, the strawberry planter that was out for his for the, the prep for the, the preview for the show. So that was kind of, that was very cool too. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. So, and that video will will be up live uh, sometime tomorrow morning. Excellent. All right, Scott, do you have okay, a question just... to take away? Um, we did, uh, no, I don't. Did you do a plus two takeaway, Jess? I did, and I sent you the link. All right, it looks like we might skip that well. tonight. That's good. That just means I don't. We'll be ready for next week to continue our social media explained plus two takeaway. So I'm trying to think about Earth Day and and how even within the comments of our the people here and even between Scott and 
Wayne and myself how different and personal this day actually is. So as much as it might be considered commercial, commercialized by some, and I actually think Tracy brought up a really great point about, you know, are we desensitized every day because we now have a day about it. And so I'm going to have to think on that a little bit more because I think it is up to us to decide what are we going to do to make an impact. I know that besides these little seed bombs of the, the pay it forward, gratitude, happiness kind, we have plastic bags, I say plastic bags, reusable bags. I don't know where my mother finds these and I've got to give my mother all the credit in the entire world because for um, she lives in Houston, Texas, so that should say a lot right there about the culture and, and how they look at the world and, and what some of the priorities as a culture, not the individual people there, but the overarching theme. And so I get these bags in the mail every single time. Every single time she sends something, I get these cool bags. And I take them to the store, and people compliment on how beautiful my shopping bags are because of how wonderfully wonderful and fun they are. Now, in one city out here, in Issaquah, Washington, they actually banned plastic bags. So if you go to a Target and you don't take your own bag, I think they finally got some paper bags in as a choice. But for a while, you carried your stuff out or... Um, you know, you brought your own bag to put it in because they banned plastic bags in that city. And as cool as the idea was, I don't think the I don't think the citizens were quite ready for what that actually meant because not only you know Target was affected because it was big it was big, but so did grocery stores were affected. Other shopping places, whether it was a Kohl's or a I don't know I don't know what else is out there. It's not a town that I frequent too often, but it's, I find it very interesting, and so we keep bags in our cars. We have enough, and they're very inexpensive to buy. When people are selling these bags, they're like 50 cents or a dollar, or and, they give them away. And, and you're talking about cloth bags, you know, really nice bags that are sewn yeah. with... Yes, yeah, sewn right. or recycled plastic, minor recycled mm -hmm. plastic, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so uh, you actually have to wipe them out and leave them open. You, they don't air dry very well. I put, I just put mine. I, I I have ones that are made out of you know heavy duty, uh, heavy duty cloth, almost canvas. And after a while, you just put them in the washer, and they they wash up really great. And then you reuse them. Uh, Seattle, they, there's a growing movement uh, for uh, banning uh, plastic bags that you know you use once and then you throw away. Uh, and Seattle has gone that route as well. And I've I've heard that Hawaii's done that. And it'll be interesting to see. You know, if in five years or ten years the new norm across the country uh, would be banning of these you know plastic bags that you use once and then they go straight into the landfill. I have to tell you, there really are good uses for them, though. I mean, it, there are some really good uses for plastic bags. When we use, I was kind of sad when the city did this because that's how dirty clothes came home from school during the potty training stage. That's something that I know pet owners love to use to clean up and be responsible pet owners in the community. So I, I think there needs to be a good replacement. I think there needs to be an alternative for the use of what that brings to actually have it. And that's my own personal opinion. I feel like it's pretty ingrained. But you know, not carrying bags around, not using plastic bags, maybe even not buying bottled water. You going to a grocery store that has or Starbucks, you can walk into Starbucks with your own water container and they will give you filtered water. You don't have to drink tap water with anything else in it if you don't want. They will give you filtered water and you can fill up your reusable water container. And that's something we can do anywhere no matter where we live. You know, they, they say that it, uh, we, we had a program about the one thing. It takes 66 days to, to create a new habit. And so there are just so many things that we can do. It's not a matter of the opportunities not being out there. It's just a matter of doing it enough time so that it becomes the new norm. And it's like you know driving a car. After a while, the mechanics are, just disappears in front of you, and you would never think of you know not having your reusable water bottle uh, to refill whether it's at a Starbucks or if it's just in your in your own home uh, as opposed to you know, buying cases and cases of, of water that's in these plastic 
bottles that are not reusable. And you're not supposed to use these plastic bottles because they are unsanitary after a while. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm friends with several people on YouTube that consider themselves preppers, I guess, if you will. And I like to look at it a little bit differently. I like to think I'm more of somebody that's wanting to, to think ahead or to be um, uh, ready for whatever might happen. Have you know, had I lost a job or uh, maybe maybe I'm sick and I can't make money, and so I need to be self-sufficient as much as possible. And one of the big things going around right now are those life straws or the straws that you can. Uh, bend over and, and suck water right out of a creek in the woods, or um, you could you could drink out of your toilet if you wanted to, and you're not going to get sick. And a, something like that is a great solution for somebody that's looking to save money and um, create less of an impact, um, negative impact on the planet um, by using water bottles like this. So it's something that I would highly encourage people to look into. Um, if you go through a lot of bottled water. That's just Absolutely. You know, Carrie, he, he made a comment, aren't there other ways to fix the problem? And I would say the answer is always yes. Uh, always, always, yes, there are other ways. Some we don't know about, some we do, about, do know about. Some, um, I know for the purpose of this show, we were trying to do things for beginning beginners, yeah. people that were interested in making an impact, or doing small things that might not take... I'll take a lot to get used to, I guess would be a good way to look at what we were trying to do with this show. So the, I hope, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I hope that or this inspires everybody to go out and look and take one step further than some of these simple, straight, they're st simple and straightforward, but they still require a, an action change. They still require a change in habit. And once that's done, it's easier to take a bigger change in habit. I know over in Tracy's um, health commu healthy community, I think it's called Healthy You. I apologize, Tracy, if I get it wrong. Put it in the in the event or in the event comments so everybody can go check it out. There was a gal who was talking about making her own cleaning supplies because of how crazy some of the ingredients and in cleaning supplies was. Mm -hmm. And I was totally in awe of her because. <laughs> Because it's amazing, even in a natural product, what is not very natural about it. So we have to make good choices. And I think, Wayne, what you were talking about was right along those lines. No matter what we're using, how do we make impact, a negative impact? Yeah, you know, one, one of the, the ways that I like to look at it is, is we, each one of us, um, I like to use the ripple analogy, each one of us cause a ripple. Just like a stone, when you throw it in the water and it ripples out and it affects the, the water and the banks around it. And we have a choice. We can make a choice to either leave a positive ripple or impact and we can leave it or we can leave a negative one. And there's really no black and white for me. It's either good or it's bad or it's positive or negative. And, and you know, we, we have that opportunity every single day that we, uh, that we wake up to make sustainable choices that leave a positive impact rather than a negative one. And I, I try to measure a lot of my practices that way. Um, and I hope it comes through. And that's one of the, the premises for my uh, personal YouTube channel. So. Well, I'm, I'm, all, I'm almost wondering if we can proclaim Earth Day a success this year. And one of the reasons for being able to say something like that is it's nice to be able to take a deep breath and to have not exactly an excuse, but an opportunity, a celebration, to talk about these things um, in a very thoughtful and considered way. Uh, and tonight with a couple of demonstrations um, with the seeds and the, and the, and the container. Uh, I I bet that I bet that this will you know take seed in a few households, and it may be that you know two generations from now people won't even realize why it is that they had these wickable pots or these seed bombs uh, in their family, but they will because um, of Earth Day and what we're doing tonight. What did you snag, Wayne? Oh, yeah, Cheryl Deuce said, take one step today uh, that is further than you already are. 
Um, I'm having a hard time reading it. But I'm uh, no Wayne, but I ple I pledge to make at least one change today. Right, right. So, um, you know, I love the interaction of your audience. You guys have an right. awesome audience. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We we are incredibly lucky on on that on that. So. Let's wrap up. I want I want to give everybody a chance to uh, Scott and if you have a few closing comments and then Wayne, I want you to be able to promote your um, Pay It Forward TV and your other channel if you want whatever you want and then I'll close and we'll wrap up for tonight on this beautiful, wonderful Earth Day. Yeah. Well, and what a beautiful, wonderful Earth Day it is. I I think um, if we if we take a deep breath and. We started the program off talking a little bit about gratitude, and I think gratitude is an underrated state of mind. To there, all you need to do is to take a look at the stars, to hear the frogs, to enjoy the weather. I mean, that is all what the Earth and Mother Nature is all about, and uh, not to get overwhelmed by it, but just to be grateful for it. And if if we do that, um, we're better people for it, and uh, it will inform our thoughts and our actions going forward. So if you're looking for some closing thoughts, uh, that's the, those are the ones that come to mind. Yeah, um, and I think you're you're right. Uh, you're you're right on on the money, Scott. And I try to do that every single day that I wake up. Um, think about the the world around me, and I love gardening for that reason because it gives you a chance to just. Relax, you know. Not everything goes right the first time. I've killed tons of plants. <laughs> yeah. I've left them left them thirsty many times, but um, it gives you an opportunity to just release and to be disconnected from the electronics in the world today, and to connect with something a little more natural and um, our environment. So that's what Earth Day is to me. It's it's it is every day for me, and and I enjoy it. Um, so that's my, my thoughts on Earth Day. Jess? Okay, did I miss it? Did you talk about your team? No, I didn't. If you want me to jump in right now and finish, I will. Yeah, so, please um, do. Guys, I'm, I'm also starting a uh, TV series or a web TV show. It's going to be hosted here on Google Hangouts, and uh, the website is aworldforchange.com. Um, it's called A World for Change TV, and our topic is really focused on sustainability. And the goal with our show is that you, as a viewer and a guest on our show, can have one or two or three takeaways from each episode. They're going to be 30-minute episodes, easy to get in, but takeaways that you can apply to your life currently today um, as you leave the show and become just a little bit more self-sustainable, um, more self-reliant, and able to... Uh, control, help to control that environment that you're in and give back to the world around you. So that's the topics that we're going to be covering there. And um, uh, you can go to the bio on my page or my Google Plus page and you can find a link to that uh, TV show's um, uh, Google Plus page and uh, connect with me on Google Plus. I love to have fun and, and uh, I will interact with you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you on YouTube. That's right. And I want to say thank you very much, everybody. Check out a few closing comments. Phil, he shared, if anybody is interested, here's a video of my aquaponics system. So make sure and take a look at that if you're interested. Carrie Butler brings up such a great point. No matter what our choices is, they have ripples. You know, I really like the way your brain works, Carrie. Um, and <laughs> we may not... It's very interesting. We may always come at it from different things, but I think in the end, we all are looking for betterment of our world and our families and the place that we live and how we contribute. So I love that about our audience. I love that about Google+. Plus. I love that about the world as a whole. And I have to close with, with Johnny's comment. Spoken like a true hippie, Tracy Baker. I have to tell you, she's been having, if you haven't seen it, you got to make sure and visit the event page and take a look at everything that she's sharing. Worms, compost, old school and environmentally sound, beautiful Earth Day, JSY. That is how we like to leave it. And I'm going to, as we, right before we go to the closing 
uh, the closing piece I want to place, I want to bring this back up. We can do a little bit of shaking ourselves and change the world around us for the better. And it takes all of us and all of our personalities and all of our backgrounds and all of our choices and all of the differences that we have to make this world as beautiful as it is and to reach the potential that we know it has. So thanks, everybody. Happy Earth Day, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.